Shalom, family. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah, our Father, and Yahusha, the Mashaya, his voice. Hear, O Yesharo, Yahuwah, our mighty one, he is one Yahuwah. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you the sons of Yah, or the sons of God, and this is part four. We're in the New Testament, based on a true story. Do you believe that the Virgin Mary story in Matthew is a true story? Let me tell you what you have to do in order to believe it. You have to place the master of the universe, the creator of all things, him who is seated upon the throne on this crime scene with another man's wife. Are you prepared to do that? I'll let you think that over. Let's begin. Luke chapter 3 verse 21 to 22 verse 21 Now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was open. Verse 22. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Look what the translator put in. That the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, has a body. And it lit upon Jesus. And then there came a voice from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Well, we know this last part happened because it's in Psalms chapter 2 verse 7. But in Psalms chapter 2 verse 7, it was corrupted with a bad translation because they put, This day have I begotten thee. You see it on the bottom there? It should have read, Thou art my son. This day have I raised thee up. What does that speak of? The adoption. The adoption of sons. All of us who turn back to Yah are adopted as sons. Do you remember that's one of the promises? The promises are only for the children of Yeshua. The Greeks the Romans, any other nation, none of them have the adoption of sons. It's only for you. And your enemies, they know this. This is why they went this far to perpetrate this fraud. Verse 23, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. How could he be begotten? And he's 30 years old. You see what I mean? Being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Brother David, what is that in parentheses? As was supposed. This is a disclaimer. Why would you put a disclaimer here? You see, Luke didn't read like Matthew. So they had to put a disclaimer lest the reader discovers that Luke is a contradiction to Matthew chapter 1. Let's see how it would read without the disclaimer. And let's add the right names. 
and Yahusha himself began to be about 30 years of age, being the son of Yahusep, which was the son of Heli. <laughs> that would have shut them down. So they put a disclaimer here. In their ignorance, they don't know what they've done. Listen, our father put all of these bloodlines in your book to establish legitimacy, property rights. In this case, a direct line to the throne of King David. If you put in here as was supposed, then Jesus is an imposter. Are you with me? But listen, the scholars, the theologians, the people in whom you trust, you'll trust them before you'll trust me. Listen what they have to say. They say that this is not the bloodline of Joseph. They say that this is the bloodline of Mary. Can I ask you some questions? First of all, understand that we're in the patrilineal line, passed down from father to son, from generation to generation to generation. Does Mary have the nuclear DNA in her womb? No, only the man. Brother David, you keep saying about this nuclear DNA. What is it? It is the life itself. The life force, the seed, has the soul and the spirit intact. What is the part of the woman? She is called the builder of the house. She builds the flesh suit that is around that seed. That is her job. But she does not have the nuclear DNA in her loins or in her womb. She has the egg that harbors the seed. Are you with me? Therefore, she cannot be in the direct lineage of the paternal DNA. But the white man, the scholars, the theologians, they bypass the men. Always. And they always go to the mitochondrial DNA. And you're going to find out in the next part why. So what they're saying in all reality is Mary is the link. Remember this word. Mary is the link that brings Jesus into the bloodline of King David, which gives him legitimacy. For all of you up and coming scholars and study it, those who study the book, could that be true? The answer is absolutely not. By the way, do you see your name here? Hmm? It doesn't exist. So they can say it. That's all they have to do is say it. And you will believe it. They're trying to make sense out of a lie. Let's see if we can find Mary in these generations. Verse 24, which was the son of Matat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph. You see, all men. No mention of a woman. It's a succession straight to the throne of David. But the Europeans want you to bypass the lineages that the Father has put in this book. All of them. Even from Genesis all the way through. And accept what they say. Not what's in this book. They just infer. And guess what? We believe. 
So let's drop down to verse 31. When you drop down to verse 31, you're going to see which one of the sons of David does the line of Healy come from? Which was the son of Malaya? Which was the son of Minon? Which was the son of Matata? Which was the son of Nathan? Which was the son of David? So it's Nathan. Hey, Brother David. Matthew and Luke show two separate bloodlines. Great observation. In part three, I requested that you seek out Jaconius. How many of you did that? Well, for those who did, then you know that the line of Jaconius that comes from Solomon all the way down to Joseph is a curse line. Listen to what the Bible says. None of the seed, none of the nuclear DNA with the soul and the spirit, the life force itself, will ever sit upon the throne of David forever. So if the scholars, your theologians, the liars, I should call them, if they put in Matthew the bloodline that comes from Jaconius, that means that Joseph and Matthew comes from a line that will never, ever sit upon the throne of King David. You got me? And the scholars say that that bloodline that is in Matthew belongs to Joseph. And the bloodline that is in Luke belongs to Mary. You know, the bloodline in Luke is not cursed. Are you getting the strategy here? So in comes a seed from the outside that will come through the womb of Mary and Mary is the link that brings them into the lineage of King David. What kind of wickedness is this? You're going to find out very soon. They have no choice but to do this. Because they serve a mighty one. And their father is the devil. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 29. We have to go back to verse 1. We want to see the virgin story that's in Luke. It's only in two places. Matthew and Luke. Hey, did you know that Shaul wrote more epistles, letters, than anyone else? There's no mention of this virgin story. Hey, there's no mention that Jesus came down from heaven and was incarnate in the womb of the Virgin Mary and became man. None of that. Isn't that strange? I mean, a story this big should be all over the New Testament, correct? But it's only in two places. Verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. This did not happen. Do you know that Mayakael, Michael, Gabriel, and the other angels cast God Ra'el to the earth with his band of angels. So now how does God or God Ra'el have the ability to send Gabriel to Galilee or Nazareth? Verse 27. Look whom he was sent to. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph 
So he bypassed Joseph and went to his wife. Espoused means that they are already married. Look what it says. Of the house of David. Shows his blood lineage. Shows that he's legitimate. And the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. The same by all is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Verse 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Mm -hmm. Not with Yah. Remember, Yah is not here in the book, and we don't even want to add him into these stories. Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Look up top, G2424. We're going to visit Jesus today. Verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God. Remember that? But all God, it's a place over in near Mount Hermon that gives reverence and praise to Satan shall give unto him the throne of his father David the Baal God does not have the power to do that only Yahuwah can do that but in inference Satan has brought his son Jesus who is the Christ into our book they have framed your thoughts and you thought all of these years that Jesus is the heir to the throne of David. But we've just proven that he is not. He's an imposter. Because it says, as was supposed, which means he is not from the lineage of King David. Verse 33, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Do you see how they weaved the true story in with their lie they just added a few things here they added God they added the Lord God but they never said any place here that the angel or the Holy Spirit was going to have sex with Mary verse 34 then said Mary unto the angel how shall this be, seeing I have not consummated the marriage? I have not had sex, sex with Joseph. I don't know a man. Verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, listen to me carefully. It did not say anything about the Holy Ghost was going to have sex. But because they put some words here like the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Right away in your thinking, you go back to Matthew and you look at these things. Look. On the bottom, Matthew 1, 19, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So they've already framed your thoughts. Now just putting Holy Ghost here, power of the highest and overshadow thee makes you go right back to Matthew, believing that the Holy Spirit had sex with this woman, bypassed her husband, and committed a crime adultery 
Do you believe that happened? If you do, in your mind, you have to place the master of the universe, the creator of all things, on this crime scene, which makes him guilty, breaking his own laws, and breaking the laws of the tablets in heaven where no spirit that is in heaven can come down to earth and have sex with the daughters of men. Now they're saying that this child that's going to be born of her is going to be called the son of God. If he's the son of God, he is not Yahusha. But if he is the son of God, his name is Jesus. Let's take a look at that name. Strong's G2424. Jesus. Transliteration, Iesu. Part of speech, proper masculine noun. Pronunciation, E, Ye, Su. Root word etymology of Hebrew origin, H3091. If it's of Hebrew origin, why are we using something in English? It's a modern invention four to five hundred years ago. It's the influence of the translator. We're speaking their language. They did not transliterate the name. They didn't even translate the name. They just replaced the name. Now in the Greek, you see they have a pronunciation for the name of the Masharya, and they say it's Iesu. Did you know they didn't have a Ya, a letter that represents Ya in their language? Neither did Latin. English doesn't even have a letter for Ya. A standalone letter that represents ya, like we do. In English, you can add a y and an a, and you can get a ya sound, but the letter is not in our alphabet. Neither was it in the Greek or in the Latin. So they came up with e, ye, then they didn't have a sh sound in their language. So they had to use whatever tools that they had. Su. But when you go to the root word etymology, you find it to be something totally different. What would it be in Hebrew? From what they have here in this script is Yahushua. Is that the name of the Messiah? Let's look a little deeper. Strong's. G2424, and the name is Jesus. Come down to Thayer's Greek lexicon. The dative, the accusative, the vocative, Weiner's grammar. One, Jesus. Look at the Hebrew script where they got the name Jesus from. Yad, He, Wa, Shin, An. Five letters. What's missing? In Yahushua, you have a Wa between the An and the Shin. The An is the letter that looks like a Y, and the Shin is a letter that looks like a W. But it's not here. They're going back to the Greek text to tell you the origin of this name and according to a later form look what it turned out to be later coming down through the centuries Yahshua you see it starts to change as it comes down comes down through the centuries 
Syriac, i.e., whose help is Jehovah. German Gottlieb, but later writings gave the name the force of Yahshua. See, they added a hey at the end of the name. So what I'm showing you is that Yahushua does not appear in the early manuscripts. Something new that they put into the Strong's Concordance and they use that as the name of the Messiah. Let's look a little deeper. Strong's Concordance, Yahusha or Yahushua. We're going to settle this right now. H3467, the word is Yasha. What does it mean? To deliver. Original word, Yasha. Part of speech, verb. Transliteration, Yasha. Phonetic spelling, Yasha. Definition, to deliver. When you're speaking of salvation, isn't that what you want? more than anything else in the whole world, brothers and sisters, to be delivered from your enemies? We're in the lands of our captivity. This is what we need is deliverance. But let's look at the next word, H7769. What is the word? Shua, Strong's Concordance. Shua, a cry for help. Original word, Shua, Part of speech now, masculine, transliteration, shua, phonetic spelling, shua, definition, a cry for help. Which one do you want? To be delivered or to cry for help? Okay, so if you apply yasha to yahoo, it becomes yahoo shub, which means Yahuwah is our deliverer. If you apply 7769, which is Shua, to Yahu, it becomes Yahu is a cry for help. Or you cried out for help. Is that what you're looking for? I thought. The name of the Messiah meant salvation. Here we go, H3467. This is when you come a little further down. You keep investigating. You don't stop. And you deal with word origin. And then you deal with the translation. It shows how many times the word Yasha is used in the book to speak about things that mean salvation. Look. Avenged, avenging, brought, salvation, deliver, delivered, deliverer, deliverers, deliverers, who deliver, delivers, endowed with salvation, gained the victory, help, helped, preserved, safe, save, 85 times, save, 33 times, saves, 5 times, savior, 13 times, surely will not save one time, victorious one. That's how many times it's been translated into the book. Under the Old Testament. Now go to the New Testament. I mean, go to Shua, H7769. Word origin from Shaba. Definition, a cry for help. How many times did they use it in translation? One. So 3467 means salvation and all of these other good things. And 7769 means a cry for help. Which one do you choose? Now we go to Strong's definitions. Look at the Hebrew script. Hebrew reads from right to left. What are the letters? Yad, He, Wa. Shin, Wa, An. See the extra letter at the end between the Shin and the An, which gives you the U sound. Look at their transliteration. Ye, Ho, Shu, 
Why? Look at their phonetic breakdown. Ye ho shu wa. Look what comes next. Pay attention, people. Or look at the Hebrew script. Look how small they have it. Let me just say something. They will always feed you the lie. But the truth will be present. You just have to seek it out. And they know for a true fact that you won't. You'll stop at what they feed you. And they will feed you poison. So look at the script again. It is Yad, He, Wa, Shin, An. There's no extra Wa between the Shin and the An. Do you see that? So look what they give you next. Ye ho shu wa. Why is there a U after the shin when the letter does not exist in the script? Remember who you're dealing with. These are the children of Satan. But then they have to give you the truth. For some reason, I guess. Because people will check into it, so they give you both the truth and the lie. Look, from H3068. How many of you know who that is? It is Yahuwah. And they tell you in conjunction with H3467. Brother David, that is Yasha. So if it's Yasha and you take the Yahoo from H3068, which in conjunction with the Shah from H3467, you have Yahoo Shah. You see how easy it is? When you apply yourself and you work hard and you don't trust your enemies now if you're going to get Yahushua it has to be H3068 and H7769 do you see it here? doesn't exist okay so now they gave you the truth <laughs> then they go back to their lies they say it means Jehovah saved Jehovah means earth destruction saved. Come on, stop it. Then they gave you Jehoshua. Remember, what they're saying right now is that these names that you have, i.e. Joshua or the Jewish leader, they're saying it comes from H3068 and H3467. You don't see H7769, do you? So we caught them in another cover-up. They've covered up the name of the Masha Yah. Now this is how you have to do it, brothers and sisters, if you want to learn the truth. Verse 36. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she have also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Okay, so, Brother David, I mean, I'm so confused now with the Bible. I don't know what to believe. Well, the truth is here in Luke. Read the example, the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth. See exactly how Gabriel functions. He didn't bypass Zacharias and go to Elizabeth. He went to the husband first. He followed protocol. 
But because the Europeans are trying to perpetrate a lie and bring this story, their story, into our book, they'll do anything to achieve their goal. But read the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth. It's in Luke chapter 1. And that's the way it happened. Joseph, Yahusep, he is the father. I mean, if Yahusha is going to be legitimate, he has to come through the loins of one who leads back to King David. So Yahusha is the son of Yahusep. But Jesus is not the son of Joseph. He is the son of the Holy Spirit. Verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Don't add your father's name in this statement. Because your father has limitations. He's not going to break his own laws. If he did, he wouldn't be righteous. We serve the mighty one that cannot lie. Or else he wouldn't be righteous. What did he say? I'm going to raise up a prophet from amongst his brethren, not from the heavens. He's going to come from Jacob, not from the heavens. He's going to come from the tribe of Yahuda, not from the heavens. Now see, the lie is placed in here through the translator who has another mighty one. You have two mighty ones in this book. This is why you cannot play around. You have to really go deep and check into everything. Because if you don't check these people, these theologians, these translators, your enemies will have you thinking that your father committed prima nupte. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever seen Braveheart? The couple were getting married. You know, the ceremony. And then the Lord of that town came in and said, It is my right to prima nupte. That means he can have sex with the man's wife first before the husband consummates the marriage. So he takes the espoused woman who is married to the man. They just haven't consummated yet. He takes her back to his castle. It's called the Lord's Day. And he commits adultery with this woman. Then afterwards, he brings her back to the husband and says, now it's your turn. Are you saying that Yah functions like that? Continue to part five. Shalom. Shalom.